Welcome to the Registered Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Uh, the, this is a show that is being taped in March. We're reporting on February recordings at the Registry of Deeds. And our headline for the month was, The Spring Market is on its way, hopefully. I have a great guest coming on, a realtor by the name of Justin Dolan from William Ravies Real Estate. We'll be talking about some of the great county and colony history. So let's go right to the numbers. You're going to see a bar chart of deeds, deeds of sales of property. Um, we recorded 418 deeds in February, uh, more than the 300, more than the 414 in January, and eight percent more than the deeds last February. Hopefully, a good sign. Um, year to date, we've, we're up eight uh, percent. The next image is of the sales for each of our 27 communities, one city, 26 towns, alphabetically from Abington to Whitman. And you can see every community has had sales. Uh, Plymouth and Brockton have the largest number of sales, but every community on that list has had a property that is sold uh, during the month of February. Um, mortgages are something we've been following very closely. Once the interest rates went up, mortgages uh, went down, the number of mortgages went down, the refinance market totally dropped out. Um, but we had a little bit of a bump this month when we had um, 818 mortgages recorded, a little higher than January's 816. But if you look at the bar chart all the way to the left, you'll see in February, there were only 703 mortgages recorded. And hopefully that's a sign that even with the higher interest rates, people are realizing they can make a move now and, and refinance later. Uh, the next image you're going to see is a foreclosure deeds. A foreclosure deed is when a lender, uh, normally a lender, has taken back a property mostly for failure to pay. You can see that chart has gone up. Uh, 18 is the highest we've had in a long, long time. Um, 16 in January. If you look all the way back to February of last year, there were only nine. Now, that's impacted by the fact that there was a moratorium on all foreclosure instruments, deeds, and notices during COVID. So lenders are catching up. If you find yourself in difficulty, reach out to a federal housing counselor because they can help you through it. Um, and we've had a practice for many, many years, since 2008, during the meltdown, that we give our um, information to, to NeighborWorks, and they'll send something out. Uh, the next image you're going to see is foreclosure notices. You can see they're higher. Uh, 51 foreclosure notices in uh, February, uh, down a little bit from last February, or up a little bit from last February, and then uh, up one from January. And those are the documents that get recorded as the first step in the process. Again, if you find yourself in that situation, don't, don't hesitate, uh, don't fret, just reach out to a federal housing council. Now you're going to see a list of all the foreclosure deeds and notices for all of our 27 communities. As you can see, there's still a lot of zeros there, uh, but in Plymouth, you'll note there are 11 foreclosure notices that's something for people to be aware of and following it up. Um, and last but last night, least, I always encourage people to go to our website, PlymouthDeeds.org, go to resources, and go to Fraud Alert. And if you sign your email up with Fraud Alert, if, if anything comes up under your name, you'll get an email. There are a lot of companies out there trying to offer a service to you for a pay. This is a free service we offer, PlymouthDeeds.org. 
resources, fraud alert. And any questions, call our office, 508-830-9290, and we can help you through that. So we'll see you in the next segment. I have a great guest, Justin Dolan, a real estate um, realtor with William Ravies Real Estate. Thank you. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we always do something educational in nature. We've had surveyors, appraisers, uh, home inspectors, commercial real, real estate lenders, and above all, all else, a large number of realtors. Realtors are the people that are on the ground and know what is happening out there in the real estate community. So I have a great first time guest today, Justin Dolan. Welcome, Justin. Thanks, John. Uh, and Justin is a realtor with William Ravies Real Estate. Yes, William Ravies, yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell our viewers, Justin, how you ended up as a realtor? Yeah, so how I kind of got into this role was because I actually was in the remodeling part of the housing industry. Yeah with my father's company, which is John Dolan Kitchen and Bath. Okay. Been in business for just over 60 years now. Wow. And I ended up, I had a health issue, and I was kind of driven to go more into sales, and that's what forced me kind of into just a different part of the housing industry. Right. And made me want to become a realtor. Yeah. How have you enjoyed it? I love it. Yeah. Right. It's definitely, it's, it's a job where it's of service, mm -hmm. and I love that I feel like I get to help people achieve their goals within real estate. So that's kind of why I really love this job. And a lot of people recognize the name of your overall company. Why don't you explain a little bit about them? Definitely. William Ravis, the one thing I love about them is that they're family oriented. And just like my father's business, it's still a family run business to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, we're also spread out within all of Massachusetts, over 50 offices, <clears throat> but then we're also up in all over New England, going south into the Carolinas and all over Florida. And I've been able to build relationships throughout the states where now I can help people be, be or move within a large part of the country. Right. Yeah, so we're, we've seen at the registry in our recordings, you know, be, due to low inventory, uh, the higher interest rates than previous, uh, and just people aren't ready to make a move yet, a slowdown in the real estate market. Have you seen the same thing from the last couple of years? Now, it's definitely slowing down regarding inventory with people who want to sell their home. But right now, going into March, I feel like we have an <clears throat> early spring market that's really come on. Great. And we've had a lot of bidding wars recently, too. Even, you know, someone in my office by the name of Colleen Palilio, she had 16 offers wow. on a home in Stoughton. And it just really kind of started to show us, like, there are buyers out there, but there's still not enough sellers and not, not enough homes on the market. <clears throat> yeah. So, so if you were, were uh, approached by a potential seller today, what kind of advice would you give them to be, get ready to sell a property? Ooh, the best advice I would give them is that don't just stick the sign on the ground. Let's really go through your home and make sure that any issues that could arise during a home inspection are taken care of. Mm -hmm. That if staging needs to be done, let's, let's do the staging. And if anything needs to be repainted, maybe we do that. And just go through the home with a fine tooth comb and make sure that if you're going to try to even sell on your own, maybe bring a real estate agent that's a professional in to talk about what we do and how we really bring in the right buyers and so that we can possibly either go into a bidding war mm -hmm. or sell at a premium price. Okay. And, and the same thing, if somebody um, were, were to come, that was a potential buyer, uh, and call you up and say, look, can we get together? What kind of advice would you give them? The one piece of advice that I will give them, because I know right now, the biggest fear is the interest rate. But the one thing that has always stayed true is when do you want to start building wealth? Because the longer you rent, the more you're letting someone else build wealth. But if you start today and you buy something, 
you can start building your own well. I've heard a couple of realtors say this colloquial thing, date the rate, marry the house. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. Because yeah. even what I'm hearing going into later this year is that rates should be mm -hmm. in the high fives. Mm -hmm. And if you could buy today and then refinance later this year and be down a point or point and a half, you would have gotten a discount compared to buying later this year right. when the rates are lower. I remember many years ago, long before I was doing this job, the rates were as high as 18 and people had to deal with it. Right, and I had so many, I've talked to a lot of my aunts that are, that are have been around a lot longer than I have, and they're like, Justin, we used to buy houses at 14%, 12% interest right. rates. So like now these like 5%, percent And refi and refi and refi, yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's super interesting. Yeah, so um, let's talk about um, first-time home buyers. I, I very much feel bad for young people. They're renting. Uh, in some cases, they expect they'll rent forever uh, mm -hmm. because they're, they're losing. Um, very frustrated with the current marketplace and yeah. know that if they bought a home, it would benefit them you know, with the tax write-offs and stability and all that. Um, what do you tell a first-time home buyer that comes in to see you? So the first thing I like to do is have a meeting with them because it can seem like it's an unachievable task right now. But I like to bring them in and also have them talk mm -hmm. to some of my great resources because sometimes it just comes down to whether it's going into the right type of loan program mm -hmm. for you right. so that it can be more achievable with a lower down payment program or with these rate buy-down programs so that the payment is more doable for the first few years. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of getting them in a meeting with a professional like myself and also getting them with the right resources so that even if they can't buy a home today, that we can build a plan with the mortgage broker and myself for them to make that achievable within the near future. So you mentioned that one of your uh, colleagues at 16 bidders at one home. And that means one person wins, they get the home, and 15 people get turned away. And how do you deal with tr trying to keep people to stay with it with all those different rejections? The one thing that I do when I have a meeting with a lot of my buyers is, especially in the market that we're in, is to kind of tell them, hey, we're gonna get into a few situations and we're gonna be in some bidding wars. Mm -hmm. And you might lose one or two, maybe even three of these before we get in the right one. Mm -hmm. But you always gotta give it a shot. Because if we don't swing the bat, you don't know if you'll get it. So we just gotta keep trying. Mm -hmm. and, but it's usually just a, sometimes we get it on the first time. The other thing I like to mention too, with regards to bidding wars is Myself and a lot of my office deal with off-market properties. So sometimes just aligning yourself with the right real estate agent. What is an off-market property? So sometimes what happens is I'll go in and meet with a seller where they say, you know what, is there any chance that you know anybody or anyone in your office or of your pool of real estate agents that you know any buyers that would buy this? where we don't want to necessarily have an open house and go to the open market. And it does happen where I actually, I have a, a, a house in Canton actually under contract right now where that had come together. And if you're aligned with the right agent who deals with off-market properties, sometimes you can get into a property without even having to deal with a bidding war. Mm -hmm. So it can be really great if you just align yourself with an agent that knows about off-market properties and has a big pool of agents and has built local relationships over their career. So let's talk, uh, this is being taped right before St. Patrick's Day in March. Uh, coming up to the real spring market, you know, April, April and May, um, what are you seeing going forward? The one thing that I see moving forward is it's going to be a busy spring market. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the busiest we've seen since 2022. And I say that just due to the fact with how many bidding wars I'm dealing with going into it with my own buyers and hearing it from the other listings that we have within my office. So I think 
going into later this year, my hope is is that the traje- the trajectory is correct with regards to interest rates coming down a little bit and it becoming more affordable for the buyers and bringing hopefully more sellers into the market because they're seeing the rates come down mm-hmm. too. I am fascinated by the change in t- technology over the years in how you folks do your business. Mm-hmm. Uh, it used to be you'd have a multi, you know, p- page, p- book of papers of the documents. Now people become much more educated because so much is already available online for them to look at before they come to you. That's one side of the technology. And the other side of it is just how fast things move in your trade without even having a piece of paper. It's so true. There is, you know, it's kind of this crazy thing now where I can basically go into, you know, some of my systems, set everything up for someone to electronically signature and send it over to the buyer of mine where they electronically sign within five minutes and mm-hmm. they could be a new homeowner. Right. You know, it's happening so much faster now right. than ever before. And the other thing that I will say, and you know, me being at 24 years old, I grew up with social media. Right. So I've kind of had to now be like, how do I utilize this as a useful tool mm-hmm. so that I can not only educate clients, but mm-hmm. so that I can also grow my business. Yeah. So I'm able to help my clients by educating them but also market their properties for sale within my social media as well. So uh, let's let's talk about what your role is. You know, once you meet somebody as a as a buyer, and then, and then it goes through uh, hopefully a home inspection and all the way to closing. So the one thing that I always tell my buyers is this isn't just me trying to find the right house for you. Mm-hmm. What I'm giving you is my resources. So on top of, yes, we're going to find you the right property, but it's also how do we write that offer? And then once we write the offer, get it accepted, now comes where I really get to shine. And I'm able to hand you all the resources we need, whether it comes down to first the home inspector, and then if any issues arise, I have a pool of resources, whether it's my father's plumbing, electrical, interior modeling company, a roofer, the mold guy, the root, like tons of people so that if any home inspection issues come up, we can get them resolved pretty quickly. So in a later segment of my show, I talk about some of our colony and county history. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about today is one of the first purchase and sales agreement in America uh, from 1632. And, and the agreement to, to have an agreement and then uh, acquire the property at a later date. Same same idea as a purchase and sales agreement. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's like what the the offer almost has done now. Right. As we now have like that offer first yeah, compared well, to jump into the and purchase People have to be a lot more careful with the offer now than they used to. I agree. There's definitely parts of the offer that I feel like need to be more explained to buyers. Yeah. And I usually like to sit down and go through the whole offer with them or over the phone and just explain each piece. And it's not just explaining it, it's also saying, hey, there's options here that we can add in. Certain verbiage that I've spoke to my attorneys about mm-hmm. to make the offer more competitive, mm-hmm. but also where the buyer feels safe and secure mm-hmm. still. So uh, why don't we kind of end with your um, a positive approach to what we're going to be doing in the spring market? My, my positive approach going into the spring market is really going to be talking to as many buyers as I can because it is possible to get home ownership and make that happen. And for sellers, you guys are in the best position that you could be in right now. And it's time to either start building your wealth or cash in on that wealth that you already have. And would a Justin Dolan like to tell our viewers, happy St. Patrick's Day? Absolutely. I hope (laughs) everyone has an amazing St. Patrick's Day. 
I'm going to try to enjoy it myself a little bit. I know I'll be working in between because us realtors are always working on the weekends. Right. But I'm sure I'll try to enjoy it for sure. Right. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, John. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back to the Registered Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Registry of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Justin jo Dolan for the great job he did. He was a first-time person on a cable show, and he was calm, cool, and collected, and gave a lot of great information. Thanks again to Justin. In this segment of the show, we always do something lighter in nature, some of our great county and colony history. Um, some of the holidays for this month, obviously, St. Patrick's Day on the 17th, Palm Sunday the 24th, Greek Independence Day on the 25th, and Easter on the 31st, Vietnam War Veterans Day on the 29th. But let's go right to one of our Plymouth County notable records, certainly for the season. John Boyle O'Reilly uh, grew up in Ireland, in County Meath. Uh, he enlisted in the British Army and was convicted for his supporting the uh, United Ireland. He was sentenced to death but he was instead sent to a penal colony in Australia, but he escaped with the help of a priest and found his way to Boston. He became a leader in the Catholic community, an editor of the pilot, and became a writer. He purchased a home in Hull, the Hunt Estate, to be used as a summer resident. A lot of Irish in Boston used to take the ferry across from Boston to Hull in the summer and some in, in Hull in the beaches and uh, nice water there. Um, and his house um, was demolished and rebuilt, but that property is now the Hull Public Library. He's an important figure in assimilating the Boston Irish Catholics into the Yankee citizenry, and he is a well-known person. There's a monument created by Daniel Jester French, who did the Lincoln Memor Monument in Memorial Inn in Washington, D.C., in his honor, in the Fenway section of Boston. Next one is another very well-known Irish person, uh, John L. Sullivan. Many people might remember John L. Sullivan was a very famous boxer. Um, he was a heavyweight, the first modern heavyweight boxing, boxing champion of the world. Um, he was known as the Boston Strong Boy. And he fought in the bare knuckle days of boxing, and then uh, fought in the Marcus Queenberry rules in the bare knuckle days. And um, I, he um, had a 75 round fight win over Jake Kilrain in 1889, and that would be the last significant bare knuckle bout in boxing. Uh, in those days, it was hard to remember exactly how many fights they had, but his only loss came to, on the, at the hands of Gentleman Jim Corbett in 1892. After his loss, he never fought again, and he retired to a 60-acre farm on Hancock Street in Abington, where he lived there to his death. And the last county record is a record of a celebration we have every year in Brockton. The Strand Theater was a theater uh, in Brockton on School Street. Um, back in 1941, a bunch of firefighters went in to put out a fire there. The roof ca came on top of them. Um, many of the firefighters died. Um, and um, it was the largest number of deaths for firefighters before 9-11, um, those 13 firefighters are remembered every year by family members still. They do a ceremony, and they lay a wreath at a beautiful firefighter memorial in City Hall Plaza. And moving on to the last uh, record is a Plymouth County record. And I mentioned earlier to, to Justin, we have a Plymouth County record in 1632, the first 
purchase and sale agreement in known records. And basically, it was a promise uh, on the part, upon the payment of 26 pounds that it would be delivered at a later time. That's what makes it not a deed, but a purchase and sales agreement. I want to thank the people here at PAC TV for helping with, with these shows, to share this information with people. Uh, I want to, want to wish everybody watching this show who'll see it as a belated St. Patrick's Day, but still St. Patrick's Month for many of us. And we'll see you uh, next month. Thank you. <laughs>